Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode on the trail of Ansel Adams, we're going to shoot the Cathedral Rock. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the amazing city of Paris, France. And right now, I'm in Yosemite. If you want to get the raw file, the free raw file that goes with this episode, all you have to do is sign in on my website, put in your email address, confirm it, and then you get access to all my free lessons where you can download any of the raw files, Lightroom preset, Photoshop brushes that you want. Hundreds and hundreds of free goodies just for you. Okay, I'm in Yosemite, and today I want to shoot the Cathedral Rock. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I see what I believe to be El Catedral or the Big Catedral, whatever it's called, beautiful uh, mountain, and I'm going to see if I can use a reflection again with the ND filter, uh, you know. And for this, I'm going to look. So you see what I'm doing. Uh, the problem with this is that I don't like how the sand is here, you know, the sand coming here in in the shot. I want to just have the water, so I'm going to move a little bit around to see if I can just get the water and that rock into the view. Let's move a little bit. Okay, so here, this is nice. I want that rock. Oh no, that doesn't work because we've got this branch now that are annoying. I don't want this branch. Let me move away from the branches just here. I don't mind having maybe a little bit of sun. Let's see, what about if I put it this way? That could be interesting. Do something like this, yeah. Do like a big panel like this. That could be interesting, because then we have the water as a foreground element. I think I'm gonna try that. I still wanna get that branch out of the view. I don't want this small branch here. So that could be it. That could be the view that I'm looking for. That could be interesting. We've got great cloud formation. Okay, let's let's take that photo. Yeah, it's always good to have on site when you put a filter, a little rag and a little brush like this to make sure your filter is really clean. The reason is I'm going to be shooting right into the sun at f22 or f16. And uh, when you shoot over f13, any sensor dust or any dust in your filter is going to show up and it's going to be a lot of work to do in Lightroom to take it out or Photoshop. So. I always have this on me, I have this, I put it in this pocket and I'm good to go. Another great thing of having an ND1000 filter is when you shoot straight into the sun with the sun in your sensor, at f22 it becomes like a star, which is very aesthetic. The problem is I'm completely backlit, so what I'm going to do right now, I, I, the last photo that I shot, I shot it at, uh, let me see, F22, 10 seconds, because uh, 10 seconds was really the maximum I could go, otherwise it was going to be overexposed. The problem is that I don't see at all uh, the mountains, like the details. So to be sure I have everything, I'm going to take another photo uh, where I'm going to go, I'm probably going to go at F16. I'm changing my depth of field, but it's not going to matter because it's very sharp anyway. But I want the sky to be completely blown away and I want details in the mountains and then I'm going to do maybe a little digital blending in Photoshop, we'll see. But I'd rather have it, I might not use it, but because I never know how the raw file is going to respond to the dynamic range once I'm in Lightroom. So while I'm here, it's always safety to take double exposure. One exposure for the sky and one exposure for the elements which is backlit. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go F16, so not a huge difference, and I'm going to go F30, yeah, F30, so it's really overexposed, but that photo I'm only going to use for a little bit of details in the mountains, if needed. You know, it's always good to have it. All right, so every time I take a photo that's in landscape mode, I always like to take three other ones in portrait mode. This way, I get more of the sky, more of the land, and I can do a pano and see 
which of the two, the pano or the landscape, I'm going to use. Choice, it's all about choices. So I'm happy with what I got here. Now I want to shoot this beautiful mountain here because the cloud formation is getting a bit too much. So I want to shoot it fast. This time I have no water in the foreground, but I'm going to find maybe one lonely tree uh, or not. We'll see what works the best. So let's hike and walk a bit and see and find a cool composition. Okay, so this is an idea of framing that I have. I want to take this, which I think is a cathedral rock, and uh, I want to try to take it with nothing in front. You see, it's completely empty. We have the sun here, which is upright. Uh, I think this is not going to work because we really have nothing there. So I'm going to see, you see here, there is a, a tree that's been led by the, um, by the sun. I'm going to get closer to the tree and see if we can get a better framing. So let's walk toward that tree. And uh, it's always good to give a, a, a little foreground element because it gives a sense of scale. And this tree is completely led by the sun, so it's going to really appear white. Yeah, you see, that tree has been led by the sun, and it's, uh, I think it's cool. It gives a, a sense of scale. So I'm, at, I'm going to be at 16, so I'm going to be wider than this. So we're going to see from here about with a little trail on the right all the way here. And I'm going to do a long exposure so that it gets trashy clouds and that should be good to go. So let's try that composition. So I think I'm happy with the one I took over to the lake and this one with the tree as a, a foreground element. Now let's jump over into Lightroom and let's see for real on a big screen what they actually look like. This is the second time that I came. I came yesterday and it was very sunny. I tried to do some long exposure. I was not happy, so I came back today where it's much more foggy, like smoky mountain type of atmosphere. And I'm gonna reshoot it and, um, and just try different type of framings, different type of light and see what is the best. So let's take some photos. All right, so here's my idea of uh, today's framing of the Cathedral Rock. You see, I hiked until I saw this little uh, dead wood here, and I think it can be a cool foreground element. One thing that I found that worked better with, with such a, you know, we're on a big plateau like this, is actually to walk out far from it and then to zoom in into it at 35, instead of just, you know, being completely wide angle. When you compress it, I find you do a better photo. So that's basically the framing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna see which one I like better in Lightroom, whether it's the, this one where it's very uh, bad weather or the very uh, nice weather one. So let's take the photo. All right, so before we jump into the tutorial uh, to do this photo, because that's my final choice, and I'll show you all the daylight and all the bad light. First of all, I want to say I'm really sorry for the sensor dust that was in the camera. Uh, we, you know, we were under the rain, under the stress. We changed a lot of lens, and you know, we ended up have, having some spots. And uh, we had this for almost a three days, so I'm really sorry about that. You do not need to leave me a comment about it. I'm already annoyed enough myself. But before we get going into showing the photos, I just want to show you something, is that if you subscribe to my website, uh, you not only get access to the free lessons, but on the gear page, you get access to this link called the Creative Cloud Photography link. And what it is, is that it's a special discount where it's going to detect which country you are in, 
and it's going to give you 20% on the Creative Cloud Photography. What is the Creative Cloud Photography? The Creative Cloud Photography is Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, so instead of having it for example, if you're in the US, nine dollars ninety nine, you will get it for seven dollars ninety nine. Uh, if you are in Europe, it's going to be in Europe. Wherever you are, it's going to be a different deal. But you get the deal from my website. Okay, so let's jump back into Lightroom. Okay, command tab to put back Lightroom. So this is the daylight photo that I got that you saw in the video. This one is very blurry, actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, mo I moved on this one. There's a lot of sen sen sensor dust. Uh, this is the one that I did that was overexposed to get details. I mean, honestly, I don't like this photo at all. Uh, I don't know, I just don't like the composition. I think that this uh, here is just annoying. The trees are, you know, doesn't have any leaf. They are a bit boring. I like the sky a little bit, you know, but there's too much flare from the sun. I don't like the flare. So this is the one that I did, you know, being in portrait mode, one, two, three. And this is how it looks like when it's all, uh, you know, into a panorama. I really don't like it at all. That's why I came back the next day. I was going to finish on that. And I thought these photos were going to be awesome. And I looked at them and like, bordel de merde, as we say in French. It's really bad because there's uh, so much flair. And, you know, that's the problem with... Um, you know, with uh, the ND1000 filter. Uh, and also, I lost my ND1000 Hoya that I had, which I think gave less flair than the one that I have now. Hoya is a good brand for ND filters. Anyways, so I came back the next day when the sun was completely hidden from uh, from us. And that was kind of cool. So, I mean, there was a lot of uh, bad weather there. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's how it looks like. That's the photo... That's the one I finished retouching. I'm going to show you how I retouched this one. Uh, but I bas basically used the, what I call the on sale Adam presets, which you get for free if you subscribe to my newsletter. So uh, this one is the one that I like the most. With the, I like to have a little you know, foreground element. It just gives the impression of where you were. What is your viewpoint? What you're showing from? And instead of having plain grass, having this little dead wood, I think was interesting. Uh, so... Let me see what other... I tried without the dead wood, and I think it's stronger with the dead wood. It just makes a nicer composition. Foreground, middle ground, background, you know? And then I tried uh, like this, with just this, but I find now it's annoying because that foreground element is like, you know, it's kind of like not there. Uh, it's like half here, not there. I don't like to have something either. You have it in full, like this, or you don't. So that's why I'm not picking this one, and this one is again without anything. So at the end of the day, I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to go... Uh, if you have downloaded with this episode the Ansel Adams presets, I'm going to be using that. So uh, here they are, the Ansel Adams Yosemite. So let's click to the basic preset. Okay, not bad, but let's see what the Ansel Adams Drama Gradient Filter is going to give me. Ooh, much better. Now let's see what the Ansel Adams Drama Rideral Circle Dark is going to give me. Ooh, I kind of like it. Let's see what the light is going to give me and what like, the middle is going to give me. Okay, I'm going to go for the dark one. I think the dark one is good. So what it what it basically did is, and you should watch the first episode of this series to see, but, you know, I opened up my shadows 100%, my highlights down, you know, did my whites and blacks. So I did my contrast. So my histogram, you know, is is more, you know, dispersed but still a little bit on the left because i want to go for a dark look you know i might adjust you know you once you use a preset you can adjust you can just click on the on the uh, on the uh the black for example with the alt key i really want to get a lot of darks there uh, maybe add 100 percent shadows let's see the whites maybe i'm going to go further on the whites on this one yeah because i want to add contrast yeah you see it was like this and i put it like this a little bit more contrast on this one okay and now we have the famous radial circle which helps to uh, you know break uh, the break the uh, the gradient you know break the gradient break the tone value. So this one maybe this circle I'm going to place on on the cathedral wall it's, itself. I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, don't make it too bright because you don't want people to notice. You just want to slightly vary your tones like they used to do in the good old times, but not more than that. This one might be a bit strong, so you can lower the clarity, lower the exposure. Uh, and this one is not good because this is an ugly tree and it's right on an ugly tree. I don't want that. Let's put it on this tree there. Could be nicer. And this one is also not on a very nice tree. I'm going to put this one. This one, let's see. Maybe I'm going to put one on the sky here. 
make the sky a little bit more crazy. You know, it's just a little variation of tones you can do either with a brush or with a radial filter, which I like to do. The key is to not do too much. Okay, I find personally, and that's something I didn't correct the first time we touched this, I find that this tree here is a little too dark. So I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to add some, um, you know, I'm going to go to exposure here. And I always add a bit of exposure and maybe a little bit of clarity. Just want to get some more details on that tree here. Uh, maybe I'm going to make, okay, you see I made my brush too big, so Command Z to undo. I'm going to make my brush smaller. I just want to put, add some little, let's see if I can open up the shadows a bit more here. Come on, add some exposure. Oh my God, there's really hardly the details there. That's bad, that's bad. But it's okay, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to do the same thing here, just add a little bit of details. Okay, there's a lot of contrast done here and less there, but I think it's kind of cool. Now, I'm a little bit of annoyed by the gradient filter, which is here. Let's see if I take it out. What? How does it look? Not bad. I like the gradient filter. I like what it does here, but I don't like what it does on the Cathedral Rock itself. So, there is this new option in Lightroom CC when you do a gradient filter. Let me show you before the, without the gradient filter, with the gradient filter. You see, I have a filter on top and at the bottom. Okay. Uh, and so this one, okay, all right, I'm bringing down the highlights on this one, I'm lowering the exposure, okay. But I don't like what it does here, so I'm going to take a brush, and I'm going to erase, I'm going to click on erase, so brush and erase. So now I can just erase what I'm doing. Now, this is way too much, so I'm going to press Command Z. And so what you can do is just lower the flow of your eraser. So you just erase a little bit. Uh, of your value, but not all of it. I just don't want the cathedral wall to be so dark, you know? So this is something totally new in Lightroom CC. And for me, just that was really worth the investment because now I can do a lot better things with the gradient filter, you know? Uh, so now we have a bit of a hollow there, which I hate. So you can try to click, go onto auto mask and click just on the cathedral rock with the minus and see if you can take the hollow out hello hello something here you know i don't like when you have like a little dark uh, corner i don't like when the retouch can be seen you know the the retouching needs to be uh, not too much visible okay that's kind of better it's a bit of a hollow still so what you can do is i'm going to go back uh on on the uh on the gradient filter here okay which is here i'm maybe going to lower a little bit i'm going to make it less strong yeah. Okay. And uh, I might just add a second one here just for the sky. Okay. I added a second one just for the sky. Way too strong. So I'm going to lower it. Way too strong. I just want to get back some details. The good thing is that the Sony A7R 2 has so much dynamic range, like a lot of, you know, modern uh, cameras today. And so you, can, you get, you see all this detail that was lost in the sky. It's back. It's right there. Okay, now that's a bit too much. I think I, I went a bit crazy on this one. I just want to add a little bit more details. So you see before the graded filter, after the graded filter, crazy. You get all the details back in the sky. It's like, you know, what they used to do back in the old days. They used to expose for the shadows and develop for the highlights. And, uh, you know, trying to get more contrast into the highlight, into the development. Well, you can do that now with the dynamic range we have in camera. I think it's so cool. Right now, I'm learning a lot of black and white techniques. I bought like a very old 4x5 camera and I'm doing a lot of, I'm developing my own films and trying all these techniques. And it's funny to compare how they used to do it 40 years ago and how easy is it to do now with the cameras we have and, uh, and Nitrum. Okay, so I kind of like that. I think this is going to be it. Oh, no. I want to take this graded filter here, okay? Uh, and I want to make it darker. I want to make it really darker. I really want to darken the bottom of the photo. I like the vignetting that it does. And you know what, I'm gonna erase it, I'm gonna redo it because I want it to be very straight. You can just press shift to make it straight and I'm just gonna lower the exposure. I really wanna close the photo. What I mean by closing the photo is I, I want the viewer eyes to really come here, not there. I, it's good that it's here, but I don't want it too much attention. Okay, I went too much further. I'm gonna lower this a little bit, yeah. Especially the back here. I just think it makes a nice gradient, you know, uh, of the field which is here. And voila, that's that's uh, that's my uh, photo of the Cathedral Rock. I was really happy about it at the end. And uh, 
I, I hope you learned something and I hope you try out my Ansel Adams you know, presets. All you have to do is subscribe to my daily newsletter and you can get it. And then you will get tons of emails from me with tons of promotions on all my courses and really cool offers and all my free tips and everything from me. I, I have a big marketing team, so don't worry about that. And I hope you do enjoy it. You know, help me finance all the free stuff that I do. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions? All you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email. You can then create an account and then you can access this free lesson tab. You can choose from over 200 free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing for nothing, no money. It's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome and let's do some photos together.